We've now derived the Carnot best response functions. The best response functions for two firms that set their quantity and then sell that quantity at whatever price they can get. Firm 2 is going to calculate for every level of x1 what its best response for x2 will be. And similarly, firm 1 will calculate for every quantity of x2 what its best response for x1 will be. Where those two best response functions intersect is where the Cournot-Nash equilibrium lies. So if firm 2 produces this quantity, firm 1 best responds on the blue best response function by producing this quantity. And when firm 1 produces this quantity, firm 2 will best respond on the magenta best response function by producing this quantity. So they're best responding to one another in this Nash equilibrium. We can now ask, can we actually calculate what this quantity is? Well, we have two lines that are intersecting, and it's pretty easy to figure out what the equations for those lines are. So for the magenta line, we have an equation where x2, what's on the vertical axis, is equal to a vertical intercept of xm minus a slope. We go down by xm and over by 2xm, so that's a slope of minus 1 half times x1. And the blue line has an intercept of 2xm, so x2 is equal to 2xm minus a slope of 2, or of minus 2, times x1. When we set those two equations equal to each other, we can find the intersection point. So we get the first equation, xm minus 1 half x1, and set it equal to the second equation, 2xm minus 2x1. We then gather all the x1s on one side by adding 2x1 to both sides. So we get 2x1 minus 1 half x1. That gives us 3 half x1. And we collect the xms on the other side. So we subtract xm from both sides. And that will leave us with just xm on this side. Then we multiply through by 2 thirds to get x1 the Cournot quantity for firm 1, being equal to 2 thirds times xm. 2 thirds the monopoly quantity, so less than the monopoly quantity. If we then substitute that into either of those equations, we can get x2, the Cournot quantity, and that's going to be the same. So the Cournot competitors together are going to produce 4 thirds of xm. So they're going to produce more than the monopoly quantity. So the Cournot quantity, which is just the sum of what the two firms produce, is equal to four-thirds the monopoly quantity. And we can see how these quantities relate to it, each other in this picture. If we just put in a dotted line from this intercept to this intercept, then every quantity combination on that line sums to the monopoly quantity. So if I put a 45 degree line in, and we pick this point, that would be the point that would happen if the two firms get together and decide to behave as a single monopoly and split the monopoly quantity. So at that point, we would get 1 half times the monopoly quantity here, and one half times the monopoly quantity here. So this point would be the monopoly point if the two firms were behaving as a single monopoly, and this point here would be the Cournot point. So the monopoly quantity is less than the Cournot quantity. In fact, for the assumptions that we've made, a linear demand curve and constant marginal cost for both firms, the Cournot quantity is four-thirds the monopoly quantity. So we know that the monopoly quantity is less than the Cournot quantity. We can also compare that to the Bertrand quantity. On the Bertrand price competition, the two firms compete until price is equal to marginal cost. And that happens when together they produce twice the monopoly quantity. So if we draw another dotted line connecting these intercepts, we get a line where the sum 
of the two quantities is 2 times xm. So if the two Bertrand competitors split the market by producing the monopoly quantity each, summing to 2 times the monopoly quantity, we would be at this point. So that would be Bertrand competition. And of course, under Bertrand competition, we're producing more than under Cournot competition. So Bertrand competition is more than Cournot competition. That tells us also what the prices are going to be in the different markets. So for a monopoly that's producing the least, the price is going to be the highest. So the monopoly price is going to be greater than the Cournot price. And the Cournot quantity is less than the Bertrand quantity, so the per Cournot price is going to be greater than the Bertrand price. And in fact, we know the Bertrand price has been driven down to marginal cost. So we can see that in these market structures, the price will be greatest under monopoly, greater than under Cournot competition, which will be greater than Bertrand competition, which will be equal to marginal cost.